very warm welcome to listeners and viewers of the Darknet Summary. This is a special edition as uh, we have a live guest. Usually up until this point, we would always invite NetHone's intelligence specialists to discuss any findings from the dark web, but um, we've taken it one step further and we will be talking to TikTok. TikTok needs no introduction, of course. Uh, one of the world's most popular video sharing social media platforms. And with us is uh, Roland Cloutier, Global Chief Security Officer at TikTok. Welcome, Roland. Andrew, thanks for having me. Um, listeners may be wondering why we're discussing or why we're going to be talking about fraud with TikTok. NetHone specifically deals with uh, e-commerce, payment transactions and so on. Uh, but we discovered that the world of fraud overlaps and the same concepts apply to social media just like they apply to payments. So in light of this, we discovered that account takeovers are a huge problem for both TikTok, for social media platforms, but also for NetHone. So uh, Roland, without any further ado, if you don't mind ask, uh, answering the question, what types of threats does TikTok combat? Andrew, you know, I think from my perspective, cyber time, cyber crime takes a lot of forms and affects people, uh, you know, across countries and cultures and, and communities and, and, and platforms. I mean, from anything from uh, social engineering to on-platform phishing, fake websites, uh, you know, misinformation, disinformation, things of that nature, cyber criminals are, you know, continually to really shift their techniques based on uh, what their their outcome uh, is is being targeted. Um, you know, we we have an, what we call an all hazards approach to our prevention, detection, you know, response, and and we know that uh, we're we we're accountable to understanding our critical business operations, our own assets and platforms, the services we deliver, and most importantly, the safety and security are, of our community, um, which has you know, over a billion monthly active users. Um, we, we focus on over the horizon threat monitoring because of this. So what's happening in the dark web? What are criminal elements um, targeting people for, in not just in our industries, but in adjacencies and in critical infrastructure? And, and we use that specifically to help us detect and defend against those by, by being able to, to move our prevention uh, programs uh, to address these new threats. And, you know, you know I, I can't say it enough. We, you know, we really focus on uh, protecting against events that negatively impact our community. And whether those are account takeovers or the incredible work our trust and safety teams do around impersonation uh, defense, uh, we, we have the capabilities to um, not just prevent it, but detect it, um, you know, new mechanisms to doing this. And we have a, a rapid response capability to minimize the impact if something actually does happen through our critical incident response centers um, and our fusion centers. So lots going on, it's a lot to unpack there, but it's, uh, you know, with, with uh, trying to protect the, you know, the last sunniest corner of the internet, there's, uh, there's a lot to do. Yeah, yeah. And do you feel that education is a very important step when it comes to fraud fighting? We always talk about like protecting payments, protecting uh, user accounts on social media. But how much, how important do you believe that education is? But I mean, education is the key. You know, I always, as a as a former um, law enforcement officer, I, I always um, explain it to to practitioners like this. If someone doesn't know that there's a stop sign, what a stop sign means, um, they're not going to stop. So, you know, we do this every day for a living, but people don't. They don't understand how they can be tricked. They don't understand what cyber hygiene is. They don't understand any of these things. So education is a, is a must. Um, we focus on giving that in, in uh, both on platform and in public um, to our own employees. Um, and even reaching out into organizations that, you know, support education around the globe of, of, of uh, kids in school or universities or small businesses in the community. It has to be um, kind of a, you know, a first and foremost, explain to people what, 
what their what their responsibilities are in taking care of their own technology. You know, uh, we offer you know two SV or you know two FA for uh, people to protect their accounts, but they're not going to use it if you don't explain why. So education is key in doing it in a way that really exemplifies um, how people consume that information. Uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, for instance, we're a cool technology uh, company and we have a lot of young people uh, as, as our employees. So we've actually created video games uh, to educate our employees on why it's important. Uh, and for parents, we, you know, on platform, we've given uh, uh, examples through videos that they can learn on how to protect their accounts and, and their family's accounts. So there's a lot of great things that we do, but it, again, first and foremost, educate, educate, educate. So education through fun. Um, this was one of the reasons why I found it very interesting to talk to you, um, because when it comes to dealing with the issue of fraud, we take a, I would say like a serious approach because we're dealing with pe people's payments, people's money. If people are defrauded, they can lose thousands, absolutely thousands of dollars, euros, pounds, whatever. Uh, but the principles of fighting fraud are similar in, social, in maintaining a social media account, but also payments. So I appreciate the kind of initiatives that you have. Uh, I mean, one of the things that we do, we have like intelligence specialists that check the dark web. So this aids the process of internal education, but it's also allows us to share with the broader world. Uh, we have like professional, like payment professionals, risk uh, managers, uh, and we try to share as much as possible. So I, I think that you, you guys do it in a very, very fun way. We try to do it in a kind of, uh, well, I wouldn't say not fun, but it's a different approach. So I like TikTok's approach. And just a question regarding the dark web. Um, I asked a few of our intelligence guys to find anything about TikTok, what kind of uh, fraud is involved with TikTok. And I would just want to know if you've been aware or what actions you have taken uh, regarding account takeovers and specifically accounts being stolen, uh, so, sorry, stolen, but also sold in dark place markets. Yeah, I mean, Andrew, digital crime, really it's 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 on the rise right it's a mega mega business across all industries and platforms and um you, you know you're connected whether you're on a mobile device or a landline you're always connected to to the to the internet um with with the platforms and applications you use so good online hygiene is absolutely key um as i mentioned we you know we work to limit ATO, or what we call atos or account takeovers by requiring 2SV for high profile accounts and offering it to all accounts. We send reminders to creators uh, to not to not only update their passwords, but use strong ones. And we give them examples on how to do that. So again, it's part of education and giving the people the tools to do that. And of course, you know, we, you know, like you, we have a, a large uh, cyber intelligence program that uh, works with organizations around the globe to uh, find the, the latest uh, techniques people are using um, and technology to uh, defraud, uh, uh, steal passwords, uh, scrape things off the web, attack different platforms. And we work with international law enforcement like Interpol, Europol, um, UN security agencies, the Financial Action Task Force, um, uh, World Customs Organizations, uh, you know, it, it, on and on, and, and other public-private partnerships to make sure that we're all sharing information of how these things are happening. We put, we're putting in new technologies to defend against it, um, and then uh, we're uh, uh, removing uh, anybody attempting to do that from our platform. So a uh, lot of focus goes into ATOs in like crimes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, so, I mean, when it comes to TikTok, it's a very, very popular, well-known brand, but the numbers to me sometimes are just mind-boggling that TikTok can have 1 billion monthly users. And this has obviously risen during uh, the pandemic where people have been moving online. It's a very similar pattern in e-commerce where e-commerce was growing before the beginning of the pandemic, but then all of a sudden when the lockdowns began to take effect, people 
who continued or wanted to continue shopping all of a sudden were forced to move online. So we've seen this huge impact of fraud in e-commerce, in uh, even like social media accounts and account takeovers. It's fascinating to see. Um, but touching upon the education factor again, um, we try to educate as much as possible, but I've noticed that uh, you guys at TikTok also do so. And I noticed that Safer Internet Day just took place. Yeah, it did. Uh, and how did how did TikTok participate in this? Uh, you know, the whether it's Safer Internet Day or Cybersecurity Day or Cybersecurity Month or Privacy Day, I mean, these are all important to us um, because it gives us an avenue to educate and to teach people how to protect themselves. So, you know, on Safer Internet Day uh, specifically, uh, we have uh, a, a sister organization called Trust and Safety, who's is just focused um, on uh, platform safety for our users. And they hosted uh, a whole week of events. Um, we did some, we made some major announcements around the updation, the updating of our community guidelines and um, the new protections and preventions we put in place um, that are really focused on, um, you know, ensuring that our users understand what's expected to them, but also giving us the, the enforcement um, capability um, through new technologies. Uh, we, really, we believe that people should be able to express themselves creatively. That, I mean, that's you know kind of to the point of the growth of the platform. This is why people are using TikTok um, to, to, to express themselves, be entertained, uh, but they want to do it in a safe, secure, and welcoming environment. And, and you know, we, this is what we're creating. And uh, we, we like to talk about our transparency with our community because it's so important to us. Part of that transparency is uh, what we expect our community uh, to, to do, how to protect themselves, and for us to give them those tools. Our community guidelines support that by establishing a very normal normalized set of, uh, of, of rules, if you will, so people understand what kinds of content to create or not to create on platform. And so viewers uh, also know what to report in the type of behaviors uh, to report. If they're getting fished, if people are trying to get them to, uh, you know, give up their their passwords or, you know, to somehow give them money. Um, uh, some of the main updates uh, we announced included expanding our policy to protect the security, integrity and availability and the reliability of the platform. So not just about rules of what you can and cannot do, but what we expect um, uh, from from a from a security point of view, uh, we've prohibited unauthorized access to TikTok and TikTok accounts very descriptively, and we're prohibiting the use of TikTok to perpetrate criminal activity very specifically, and and allowing us to take immediate action. So we've we've done a lot um, for uh, uh, Safer Internet Day, um, and you'll see you'll see a lot more through all of the um, technology, security, and safety uh, days and weeks to come ahead. Are you guys at TikTok planning any other fraud related initiatives or taking part in any campaigns? We are. Uh, you know, we just we in, in the United States and, and around the globe, we just had Valentine's Day. Uh, we ran things on romance scam awareness uh, that got incredible amounts of, of, of hits. Uh, and it's it, it's an issue with with uh, folks from all different age groups. Um, also, the hashtag learn on TikTok um, has over 250 billion with a B views. Uh, so people are coming to TikTok to be educated. When it comes to online safety and education, um, you know, communication is key. So uh, as I kind of alluded to earlier, we're teaching e-commerce merchants um, on platform how to how to be safe online and their consumers. Uh, for Cybersecurity Awareness Month, we launched we we launched a, a dedicated Be Cyber Smart hashtag, uh, and we'll continue that this year through uh, training and awareness. Um, and we're always looking for ways to help out our community to make good choices uh, when, wherever uh, they go online, um, not just on our platform. Uh, we talked about phishing and smishing through Fraud Awareness Week. Um, and we'll do that again coming up uh, in, in November. Um, and uh, we aim to help people spot, avoid, and, and report suspicious activity um, around, uh, you know, year round and, and, and teach them who they can contact. Um, you know, the kind of same, same saying, if you see something, say something. We're really focused on getting people to understand that it's not just about one platform. It's about their entire digital life.
Exactly. So it's it's very positive to hear that this the, the main part of the education is to reiterate to people that it's it's the entire journey on the internet. It's regarding payments, it's social media, even just simple browsing. We've noticed this, especially in e-commerce, but also just in general uh, internet terms, people who prior to the pandemic were not comfortable being online, found themselves being forced to be online, but not being fully aware of the dangers. So this is where I believe the education comes in. We have to, it's not enough to tell people, look, have a strong password, uh, update your software. These are very important, but the education which comes from TikTok or from companies such as Netto, I'm trying to educate about the just how extensive the threats can be. It's very, very important. So I'll be watching with anticipation to see what TikTok does next. Yeah, you know, we we're, we'll uh, we'll help people out during the tax seasons, uh, you know, to identify uh, identity uh, identity theft and 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 tax security issues. Um, you have national or global uh, identity management uh, day in in April, and we're gonna we're gonna be teaching them how to use two factor um, uh, you know authentication. And listen, people can always you know follow um, at TikTok Tips uh, where they can they can learn more. And, you know, we hope that, you know, um, your listeners, the Darknet Summary listeners uh, will join in our efforts to inspire. I mean, we're all practitioners. The people that listen to this typically are practitioners. And if they can go out there and, and give uh, their suggestions by using hashtag be cyber smart, I think uh, we kind of lift up the education of the world by sharing our knowledge um, and, and helping them be safer. And don't worry, we will include the hashtag and the link to TikTok tips in the description for the podcast and the videos. Outstanding, thank you so much. Um, Roland, thank you very much for joining. That's been the first real person-to-person -person interview uh, for the Darknet Summary, so I hope it's the first of many. But yeah, it was I... a pleasure having you as the first guest, so thank you very much. Well, thanks for the honor and, and, and thanks for uh, making what we do so important um, and, and shared out there, Andrew. Have a, have a, have a great series and I, and I look forward to listening to a lot more of these. Thank you. Done with fraud. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>